Okay, one second. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, actually, it's five o'clock in the morning here, so I should also say good morning. Uh, I'm Jin Yang from uh, MIT Company Institute. So I'm here to talk about the, the silicon K gas to dust optical depths towards the galactic part. So when we uh, get a data from the X batteries, for example, neutron star batteries, uh, we also want to know what the interstellar media are contributing to the data. So therefore, we measure the silicon X-ray absorption towards these bright sources in the galactic part. Because the dust contained in interstellar matter contains, uh, plays an important role in the composition and the evolution of the interstellar medium. So this can tell us the cooling and the heating process, uh, help us to understand the, the star formation. The gas and the dust content when silicon in interstellar media with Chandra high energy transmission grating spectrometer uh, can tell us a lot of information. So we measure the silicon gas to dust optical depths towards light, bright, low mass X-ray batteries, uh, these light sources. Uh, and uh, later we compare them to the molecular hydrogen in radio. This shows uh, uh, the, this background is the Wisconsin HRFA mapper survey. And uh, this source shows uh, different direction we are looking at in order to uh, measure the silicon gas and the dust optical depths. So uh, this are uh, the sources in our survey. So we use Chandra uh, HETG grating data. Um, they are well calibrated, uh, so power up free, which is uh, specifically designed to measure the silicon edge. So uh, with this highest uh, resolution from Chandra, here are two examples uh, in our uh, survey. On the right, the spectrum shows uh, uh, for the GX5 minus one with uh, lighting 2.6 kiloseconds exposure time. So this is a silicon gas edge. This is silicon K dust edge. So we can say this source is mainly uh, dust dominated and the only neutral gas contribute to the edge. On the left, it is the spectrum for the GX3 plus one with about 200 kiloseconds exposure time. And both gas and dust contribute uh, to the silicon edge. So for all the sources in our survey, uh, we used uh, the fitting uh, with, for the broadband, we used the broadband continuum models. Uh, for the lander band, we used the silicon gas edge model, dust edge, and the island silicon models. So here is the uh, overall view of the fitting for the sources in our survey. Uh, then uh, in uh, different location of the galactic barge. So I just showed you GX5 minus one. So this is GX3 plus one. So from these sources, uh, we can get the gas edge optical depths as well as the total edge uh, optical depths, including gas plus uh, dust. So for each source, you can say for most of the source, uh, they, they are consistent with the RN da, uh, standard dust size distribution. On the right figure, so I uh, put the optical depth as a function of the hydrogen column density. 
So the real dots are the gas optical depths and the blue are the dust optical depths. You can see for the gas optical depths, they are linearly correlate with the hydrogen column density, but for the dust uh, optical, uh, they are not. So uh, it, this blue dotted curve can be expressed uh, in this uh, formula. So uh, this result tells us the silicon gas is uh, fairly homogeneous in different direction, and the dust uh, they are not. So we can use this to calculate the dust green columns. So here it's uh, still the same uh, same data set. Uh, we only plot the dust optical depths. So we, well, with this, we can, uh, which means we can, from different direction, we can calculate the dust green, uh, green columns uh, based on different dust size. So at the end, uh, we compare our uh, results with the um, uh, latest 21 centimeters video survey for the carbon oxygen H2 case for uh, 10 kilometers per second. On the, late, uh, on the uh, left, the background is a radio survey, and uh, this uh, shows the location of each source in our current silicon survey. And on the right, we plot the optic depths as a function of the molecular hydrogen in radio. Uh, the red is a silicon uh, gas optical depth, and the blue is still the dust optical depth. So the x axis is uh, uh, molecular hydrogen in radio. In radio. And uh, we can still say the uh, optical depth show, uh, gas optical depth shows. Uh, uh, it uh, shows they are linearly uh, dependent on the molecular hydrogen. And for the dust, it shows the self shielding, so which is uh, uh, expressed in this formula. So finally, uh, we have measured uh, silicon X ray absorption towards. Uh, bright sources uh, in different lines of sight in the galactic barge. And we measure the gas and the optical depths and the silicon, specifically silicon K. For the gas optical depths, they grow fairly consistent with the hydrogen column density. Uh, but for the dust optical depths, they are not uh, homogeneous. So we can use uh, this to calculate the dust green size towards different uh, direction in the galactic barge. And uh, also our uh, dust uh, optical depths extracted are consistent with the uh, standard dust size distribution. And when we compare our results uh, with our radio survey, uh, we found uh, like the, at the lower amounts of hydrogen, um, molecular hydrogen, the dust optical depths are also lower, but in the direction of the higher amounts of uh, molecular hydrogen, the dust optical depths are also high. And uh, but for the gas optical depths, uh, they are uh, linearly correlating with uh, molecular hydrogen. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to take the questions. Okay, uh, thank you for a really nice talk, given especially five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, let's see, any questions? So I will ask one question. Uh, so for the bright sources towards this galactic barge, uh, do you know the rough range, the range of distances? I mean, are they, so you, along the line of sight, you are, you are seeing these sources at 
Do you have information on the distance? Oh yeah, that's a great question. Uh, this uh, can so this can help us actually make to measure the distance. Uh, so because uh, at a different direction, uh, we uh, we have already have the molecular uh, hydrogen uh, value in the in radio, and uh, since from different direction. Uh, we can get the content, then this can help us calculate distance, actually. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. Okay, if not, we thank the speaker again. And I think that will conclude our session. And so, uh, any other announcements from ROC? No. Thank you. Okay. If not, then uh, let so conclude the session and see you tomorrow. See you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thanks.